This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing the Delta Green role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is The Last Equation. It was written by Dennis Detweiler, and it's available from Arc Dream Publishing. Our handler is Sham Sabin, and this is episode one. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Shams? The camera opens on a large suburban home built on a quarter acre just on the edge of a highway. Standing three stories tall, the old house is unassuming and average, though large. Inside, the joyful voices of a large family can be heard talking amongst themselves in cheery conversation. Outside, a 2009 Honda Civic rolls down the road, parks on the street. A young man dressed in a simple overshirt, black tie, kind of nice pants, hops out, hurriedly scuttles to the trunk, popping it and reaching within. From a duffel bag, he produces a shotgun, pumps it, flings the bag over his shoulder, approaches the house with a wild look of excitement and glee as he mutters something to his breath. Blinking around the parameter, as he gets to the back, Turns out the back door is unlocked, and he creeps up and slips right in. Shots fired. Screams. More shots. A pause. More shots. A pause. As the massacre goes on, a second story window opens. A teenage boy in fear of his life hops out. He lands hard, groaning as he twists his ankle, but that doesn't stop him. The onslaught of gunfire in the home behind him is enough to get him moving. He gets a good lead before the shots stop again. A moment later, the man bursts out the front of the door, laughing and sprayed in blood. The teen turns behind him, face white as a sheet, and he hustles. Passerby and the neighbors scream. The gunman gets to the edge of the lawn and aims. He fires. He misses. As a terrified teenager makes it to the edge of the highway, 20 meters ahead of his assailant, he aims again, shoots. Not so lucky this time. He collapses on the side of the road, dead within moments. And the man calmly strolls up to the corpse, whistling as he reloads. Elated, he produces a spray can of yellow paint, shakes it up, and sprays a sequence of digits on the pavement nearby. He throws the can aside, pumps the shotgun, and aims it into his own mouth. And the camera cuts to black as we hear a final gunshot and the continued screams of the neighbors. October 12th, 2015, a Monday. All of your agents are activated, each contacted through various means. But before that, how do each of you see yourself on a Monday afternoon around three o'clock? Use this as an opportunity to describe and introduce your agents to the audience. Tom, you want to go first? Sure. I am... Uh... Agent Litton, I am sitting in my uh, apartment living room uh, watching the Pink Panther on TV, the old version with Peter Sellers. Um, I am watching intently the scene where the uh, the cat burglar breaks into the museum and uh, fires a crossbow with a cable and slides himself and on an oily floor under the laser beams and using a mechanism in his hand, he manages to reach up and uh, grab the pink panther, uh, a gigantic pink diamond. Uh, he drops it into his hand and then using the same mechanism, he places a uh, pink uh, glove 
with his own and his real initials on the glove. He then gets out of the building and gets away before the guards even know what's happened. Um, I'm like, flawless. Really well done. Beautiful. Agent Goat, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, so on a Monday afternoon, uh, Goat is doing his favoritist activity, and that is exploring the urban areas of Philadelphia. Um, I am climbing through, uh, following some instructions that are read on the internet about some really cool underground abandoned place. And so I'm climbing my way through the sewer in the hopes that I can find this jewel of an abandoned underground facility in Philadelphia. Beautiful. I mean, nothing goes wrong when you go underground, right? You just find the best things down there. It's amazing down here. You never know what people just leave lying around. It's great. Live life freely and adventurously. I like it. Monocle? Monocle is also underground in a concrete vault beneath a museum. He uh, has his own gloves on and he's flipping through some very delicate pages doing some research. Somewhere outside uh, the capital on the wrong coast. He hates it over here. Uh, every time he has to leave the job site, he's reminded that he's in the wrong part of the country and just wants to wrap up this job to go home. Beautiful. Grant? Oh, you find Grant at three o'clock. Um, he's in his lab at the uh, you know FBI in uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania. He's uh, just kind of and doing some data entry and uh, casually picks up his phone, um, checking on his daughter, see if she got home all right after school. Um, maybe throw a send a, the wife a, a text um, just thinking about her and then sets it back down and, and continues his work. Naturally, in a few moments, your wife responds. Just another simple text. Love you. Heart emoji. And last, but certainly not, not least, brain freeze. Um, you see a middle-aged, thin man ru of Russian descent. He almost looks a little bit Ichabod Crane-y with a long nose and piercing blue eyes. And he is in a cheap um, dress shirt uh, with no jacket over it top and he takes his glasses down cleans them looks across the room to his patient and says in a slight russian accent so tell me about these sexual feelings you've been having towards your cousin um well i've been and right when it gets to that point it is 3 33 p.m and you on a burner phone that's been left silent for months, uh, receive a little little message. At the same time, all of you receive a message. So it's a burner phone. Uh, maybe for for Grant or Monocle, it might be an encrypted message from an unknown email instead. Goat at three thirty three p.m. There down in the sewers, what you find is a little dead drop package that you weren't expecting to necessarily find that has the green triangle of Delta green on it right then, right there. And you also feel a buzzing on there on your, uh, your burner phone of check it. Regardless, the message that you all ultimately read goes as hello. You've been invited to a night at the opera. Please make haste and pick up your ticket from 3301 South Christopher Columbus Boulevard at 7 p.m. tonight. Now, a quick bit of uh, Google Foo notes that that address is in Philadelphia, specifically a warehouse on the Delaware River docks of Southeast Philly by the name of Delaware Avenue Enterprises. Looks like a generic shipping company that's been out of business for a few years. Now, for those of you in Philadelphia, you've got quite a bit of time before, you know, you've got three and a half hours before the dead drop. 
Everyone else, um, you got to hustle. <laughs> it's a two and a half hour drive from D.C., pretty much two hours from New York City. You don't have very much time. Right. But go. Yeah. I'm never going to get this project done. Yeah, I imagine you, Monocle, being in the middle of work. Some of that stuff, when it comes to academia, you can't just literally immediately drop it. You've got to do some packing up as well. And you've got that long, the longest drive of anyone here. So uh, you're you're pushing it. You can make it, but you got to hustle. Well, I've got my go bag ready, so I just grab that. Turn off Unless you feel your agent is especially unprepared, I would assume that every agent has some kind of go bag that they'd be able to go in. Uh, oh, I think I'll uh, head home and scramble a go bag. I'm not quite prepared for <laughs> something like this yet. Um, kind of excited. Um, just throwing everything I think I would need in a bag rather clumsily making up excuses why i have to go out of town immediately and uh what you know, on a monday night that's weird for a work trip uh you know i get called to weird things every once in a while well they want okay me to, honey you know, like something it, it's it's a bit of a drive so hey you're getting overtime pay though right i well you know how the government pays you know maybe <sighs> we'll see cheap skates So we'll redline a bit ahead of time to right around 7 p.m. Unless there's anything really specific someone wants to hash out before then. Philadelphia, sixth largest city in the U.S., one point served as the nation's capital. Many random little fun uh, mark, uh, landmarks in the area like Independence Hall and the Liberty Bell. Fun little docks, wharfs, um, parks overall on the riverfront, but we don't have time for much of that, because our rendezvous point is one of the many unassuming and dreary warehouses clustered along the southern stretch of the docks near the overpass of Interstate 76. Far from any tourist attraction or common consumer areas, this is prime industrial decay. For a place so close to this commerce and travel, uh, like it, it's, it's seriously almost deserted. And you all arrive one by one, but all probably within a pretty similar time frame. I'd imagine that Monocle and Grant are on the uh, the later end of things. Goat has a good chance of being, uh, he could certainly be quite early if he choose, if he chose to be. Yeah, I think, um, I think when I find the package uh, and then I receive my note, um, I'm going to just gather my things and head toward the rendezvous point. Okay, so that means you arrive there noticeably before anyone else, probably even before uh, before 6 p.m. So you, staking out that place for a bit, Goat, uh, you will note that around 6 p.m., a little black sedan uh, comes up and parks in a subtle spot within one of the nearby alleyways to make it so that it's well-shaded, hard to find, not easily seen at a glance, and a witchy and neurotic-looking individual somewhere in his 50s, graying hair, trench coat. He gets out of the car. He uh, opens up the chain-link fence and goes into this Delaware Avenue Enterprises warehouse that you've uh, been told to be your location. Obviously, your first assumption, if you've been in the group for a while, is that's your handler. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of hang out outside and wait. Uh, the sun this time of year actually sets a little bit before seven. So right when everyone else arrives, it is just transitioned from twilight into like actual darkness. Um, I probably uh, arrive next and I play a little game of how close I can get to Agent Goat before he notices me. Yeah. I mean, if you want to play a little game out of it, we can do a stealth versus alertness. Yeah. Okay. Nice. 
I got rolled 40. an 88. Oh, critical I got fail. fail. That's I got critical a critical fail. fail. Critical fail. <laughs> I got uh, 46 out of 50. So I, I probably okay. come up and touch you on the shoulder and make you jump. <laughs> That's a really smart idea to do it to a Delta Green agent that you've never worked with before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and startled them. But yeah, go. you just feel a hand on your shoulder out of nowhere. Jesus Christ. Who are you? We're here, we're here for the same thing, aren't we? I'm here to get my tickets. Rigoletto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'll kind of hold up my box with the symbol hanging out and then put it against my chest. Yeah. Um, uh, Litton, Agent Litton. <laughs> Agent Goat, nice to meet you. Uh, I see a car over there. Did somebody already go in? Yeah, I think our handler's here. Twitchy looking fella. I think you'll see a um, van, just a little minivan pull up. Uh, kind of a thin, gray-haired man. A little mustache. Gets out. Nice suit. Um, kind of stumbling out with a bag in hand looking kind of confused and where probably just going for the building. If we've got an address, I'm going in. Yeah. And, uh, in that is the only building in the nearby area that, uh, has a single lit window. Everything else is completely dark. Yeah, Other than like a, the odd street light or something, but yeah. yeah. We'll come walking up as you do grant and join you. I assume that hey. as you all are approaching the chain link fence and the like, uh, just for the sake of convenience, we'll say that that's right about when Brain Freeze and Monocle arrive. Whoa, hope I didn't miss anything. You know, I swear, one of these days my wife is going to suspect I'm cheating on her. One too many fake suicide calls. <laughs> You got Helping Sigmund or, Freud. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, this is a very different group than what I'm used to. But uh, yeah, gentlemen, shall we? I prefer Lacan personally. Please. Hmm. All right, in we go. Uh, though that there is the chain link fence, the door to it, there's a, a lock lying ajar. Just open it, waltz on in. Goat saw the door that the handler went into. It's the only door in the immediate area that uh, isn't locked. And it seems to enter into this front office area where this one lit window is. Uh, going inside, you can see from when you enter this one room through some windows inside the room that this is like a, an office room that like kind of uh, these windows show you like the warehouse floor, which is com pretty much completely empty. Um, plenty of shipping containers and wooden crates lying about that area doesn't look to be particularly anything of note, but this office space you enter, dusty, desolate, lit by these bright and loud fluorescent lights on the ceiling. Only furniture present is a uh, white plastic folding table set up in the center of the room, and standing behind that table, stout man, medium height, dressed in a baggy trench coat with what looks like a suit underneath graying hair that still has the streaks to show his color was originally black and his eyes constantly are neuronically glancing from side to side and seeing all of you enter he begins to speak though his voice is uh a bit on the the hush the hushed and hissing end of things good 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 you're here have you been followed no no okay good 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 all right um Come inside, close the door. No need for introductions. Uh, I know who all of you are and all you need to know about me is that I'm Agent Watchdog. I'll be in charge of this operation. Before, before we start talking business here, I need to double check. None of you know anything about theoretical mathematics, right? No. No. No, 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 no physics? How well do you understand physics? Well, I know if you throw a ball, it's going to hit the wall and come back at you. But that—that's fine. I'm talking about advanced 
number cruncher theoretical stuff here, not if you know algebra or something. Even no. low-level calculus is fine. Just I'm a little rusty on my algebra. Even better. A little calculus, but... But you don't know so, anything about advanced theoretical math, right? But yeah. what what is what's the risk? Are, you're glad uh, we don't listen, know. Yes, yes. I right, listen. I'm not entirely sure of all the. All right. You know what? Let let let, let, let me just rewind here. This, this situation is best explained by just start from the beginning and get to now. But yes, we. I'm under explicit orders that none of you can have any knowledge of mathematics to be on this operation. Good, good, good. All right. Well, I also, ooh, I should mention, we're on a timetable, so I need to be quick. This afternoon, not even five hours ago, around 2.30ish around p.m., there was a massacre in Alliance, New Jersey. A mathematics student from Columbia by the name of Michael Way arrived at the Ridgeway family home, snuck inside, and began slaughtering them one by one with a shotgun. One of the kids managed to flee the house, but Way caught up to him and shot him down on the edge of the highway, Route 55, in front of witnesses. Afterwards, he sprayed a sequence of numbers on the pavement, then proceeded to kill himself with the shotgun. Local police arrived fairly quickly. It wasn't long before the FBI was called to take over. They're all pretty baffled. An interstate murder-suicide with... Nine bodies and no apparent connection between the victims and assailant. No clues, no real leads, no known motive as of yet. All they think they have is a dead mathematician, the corpses of eight slaughtered innocents, and a spray-painted number. The problem is that the aforementioned sequence of numbers possesses dangerous and paranormal properties. We've pulled some strings to get you guys on the official case as FBI agents, and you have several objectives at play here. One, destroy the numbers written at the crime scene and all photographic evidence them in the hands of the local authorities. All visual evidence of this number needs to be erased. Also, quick thing out of game, these objectives will be summarized at a handout at the end of this briefing, so don't be too stressed if you miss an objective or something right here. Two, Determine if Wei managed to distribute the number in any manner besides the crime scene, such as by phone, text, social media, or email. Three, locate Wei's notes and other works associated with the number and destroy them. Four, locate any individuals that have been potentially exposed to the numbers and have advanced knowledge in mathematics. If any individuals do exist and are found, they must be reported to me. Finally, you have to establish an official cover story for Way's actions and close the case while making this look as at least minimize suspicion, make this look as normal as possible. The easiest explanation that comes to me is thinking of the fabricate evidence of Way having an affair with Mrs. Ridgeway that went south, but honestly, I don't care what explanation you give as to why he's killed these guys, as long as it makes sense. From here on out, Operation Eopatis has begun. Before I continue any further, you want the good news or the bad news first? Give us the bad news. news last. Okay. So here's the potential good news. We do have a friendly in the area that might be of use. A 22 veteran of the New Jersey State Police by the name of Thomas Blanett. He's a believer in our cause, but he isn't in all the way, doesn't know the exact details. You know, as far as he knows, we're just simply the group. You know, might as well be the CIA. The state police ha are providing an advisory role in the investigation. So if we deemed it necessary, I could pull some strings to assign him to the case if need be, but I leave that up to you if you want him involved. His address is a small house just about 15 minutes north of Alliance, and he slides like a little piece of paper that's the potential contact information of this guy if you deem him to be a viable asset. So here's the bad news. As I said before, 
I got all of you assigned to this case. You're not the only ones on it. Before our system flagged the numbers, the closest FBI office in Cherry Hill had already assigned two agents to the Ridgeway Way case. Supervisory Special Agent Aiden Knorr and Special Agent William Gant. We don't have the means to remove them from the case, only to tack some of you onto them. You're going to have to work alongside them, play it cool as a Team Quantico sent over to assist with this high-profile case while fulfilling these objectives. Here, you're going to need these. And from his trench coat, Watchdog produces uh, five dossiers, a, a set of car keys, and a burner phone. Laying them out on the table, slide them to each of you. As of right now, they're only expecting for you three to immediately arrive. And he points towards Goat, Grant, and Brain Freeze. However, I can get you two assigned to it officially as well. I took this precaution because we're trying to make this look as normal as possible. FBI agents rarely show up in packs of five. You, Grant, will pass you off as an agent of the FBI National Security Branch sent here to make sure this mass shooting isn't connected to a grander terror conspiracy. Brain Fe Freeze will be a forensic pathologist. And you, Goat, you have a very special role to be the mathematics consultant. Obviously, you're not a math expert, but you've just got to sell the part and say that those numbers are gibberish, meaningless, redirect their suspicion. Litton and Monocle, you do still have fake IDs for if you wish to pose as FBI consultants. Knorr and Gant aren't expecting you tonight. If you want to show up at the crime scene with the rest, be ready to explain your presence with some smooth talking, because it's going to take me a few hours to update the database to assign two more consultants. But as a disclaimer to all of you, be very careful. The media has, decide, has descended on alliance like flies and turned this into a high profile case. Certainly the primary news story of tomorrow morning. To make matters worse, Knorr is a by-the-book detail freak, at least based on his reputation from what I was able to dig up. If he finds holes in your cover stories, there's a good chance he'll push for further, invest further investigation, which is the last thing we need. Being caught illegally posing as a federal officer, typically 8 to 13 years in prison in New Jersey state law, and if you fuck up and get arrested, there's only so much we can do about that. For those not yet assigned to the case, being caught inside a secure crime scene and tampering with evidence carries a heavy penalty of three to five years in prison. You, have made, you may have noticed the car parked outside. It's clean and yours to use for the duration of Operation Eopetus. In the trunk, you'll find basic equipment for a team of federal agents to have, including clean service pistols. Use that phone to contact me if necessary, but once again, Make sure it's important. Uh, speaking of questions, now, now's the time to ask them. We've only got oh so much time before I need to get all of you on the road to Alliance. So ask now and be quick. And also um, in the chat, I will post the summary of the briefing so you can refer to that for later reference. So it seems to me like uh, Monocle and I need to work on setting up the headquarters that we're going to use while the other three pose as the agents that way we don't have to directly interact and uh but they can we can still work together potentially yeah, uh there potentially. there is utility to have people not on the case and following things outside that purview there's also utility to you being on the case because that means there's probably going to be a lot of points where you're just sitting around on standby while they do stuff and you're just waiting for something to do like i said i took this precaution but ultimately, I'm leaving it up to you who wants to be on the case and who's not, though. <laughs> Three of you have already made that decision. Oh, yeah, well, and we can we can plan that after this meeting. Um, yeah, Watchdog, since you're here, uh, I mean, I I want to get right to it. It's uh, you're, These numbers, 
they sound like an info hazard to me. I've, I've researched stuff like this. The, the Nazis had some crazy stuff, you know, whatever. But uh, what happens to the people that are exposed that understand this? I don't know. There's only so much about these numbers I even know. I don't even know what the sequence is other than the sequence that is spray painted on the ground there is the dangerous sequence of numbers. Yeah, but I mean, you're saying it's dangerous as are people going comatose? Are they acting fanatical? We don't. All I've been told is that that specific sequence of digits must be kept away from those with advanced knowledge of math or physics. And if anyone with such qualities is exposed to the numbers, they must be surveilled as a potential threat. That's all I know. Well, Jesus Christ, what if they, what if the media gets there and they take pictures of the crime scene and post them on the news in the morning? Exactly. That, that's, that's the issue here. (laughs) And from what I can tell, they've already got crew vans all over the place. Fuck. Great. Great. I hope you like cameras, because there's no beating around in the bush this one. You're going to have to deal with a lot of reporters. Need a bucket full of yellow paint, run by it, and just throw the paint over the number. I don't know. Um, whatever, Whatever you do. That that specific sixteen digit sequence must be obscured. That's something that's on our side potentially. Sixteen digits is not able to fit in one camera shot, most likely. Well, it depends say. on how small it's written. But I used a spray can, so I, I'm sure it's a mess. Plus, there's blood. Yeah, <laughs> I I think that might be on our side then. Right. Right. I just, I cannot be, uh, being this close. I cannot be photographed or filmed. I can't talk to the press. Well, photographed take- or filmed. I'm just telling you right now, if you're on the case, there are points you're going to have to deal with it. There's no getting around that. You just have to control what you say to these people and act as normal as possible. Wow. If anyone yeah. saw me, <laughs> posing as a different FBI agent. <laughs> I, I know I, the situation isn't ideal, but we have to do everything in our power to obscure all visual evidence of that 16-digit sequence. Yeah, We'll wear sunglasses and don't look directly at the lens. We'll manage. From what I, from what I was told, Lytton here is quite, uh, has quite the expertise with the ability to make people look different. So maybe he can help you out in that particular regard. Disguises. Yeah, yeah, I can help with that. Uh, this is a this is a real poser you put us on. Um, we need to get over there and sort of see the logistics of what we're going to do before we make a move. Yes. Hey, um, I got a question for you, Watchdog. Um, did you leave me this care package? All part of the plan, friend. Okay. All right. I can't think of anything else to ask. I don't know what to ask. Not till we see it. Sixteen-digit okay. number. Oh, these uh, these two two federal agents are they out of? Where are they out of? DC somewhere. The Cherry Hill FBI office, closest FBI office to Alliance. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. We got to get over there. We got to, uh, uh, like I said, we can. The two of us can establish this uh, headquarters while you guys are. Actually, that way we don't have to go there all at the same time. I think that ASAP, as they say, we yeah. should go to those numbers and deface them. Yeah, I think uh, let's let's go to site first. Just hang back, maybe uh, just see how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Supervisory Special Agent Knorr is expecting Brant, Goat, and Brain Freeze uh, within the next hour. So um, yeah, let's go. Hustle. Okay. Once again, any important questions, please let me know. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep your noses clean. Obscure the incursion. Obscure your involvement. Save lives. Scientia more zest. He salutes and begins packing up the uh, folding table. Now. So we're going to leave all of our cars here. That we got yes, here. if you want to leave your cars here, this warehouse, the main warehouse floor is a secure space. Um, no risk of any funny business happening there. All right. Yeah, the Ford Focus I got out there should serve well as uh, an official Bu car. Hmm. All right. So, um, inside the dossier he handed to each of you is a particularly detailed new identity uh, for each of you. Um, this little cutout is as real as you can be on paper, right down to some dental records, IRS returns for the last two years, and credit card receipts, and of the appropriate law enforcement IDs based on your roles. Uh, Grant, you've got that FBI, NSB agent, brain freeze, forensic pathologist, and for the other three of you, it's just like FBI consultant IDs. And of course, they all use actual pictures of your agents, pictures that you don't remember being taken of you. And the provided keys open the Ford sedan, uh, stereotypical Fed car, full gas tank, nothing looks aside of order mechanically. Uh, in the trunk, there are five medium pistols with belt holsters, pistol magazines, 10 in total, a tactical light, three sets of metal handcuffs, five FBI windbreakers, a police band radio with a set of earpieces and throat microphones, a forensic evidence kit, first aid kit, and a portable fire extinguisher. So if we all get in the car and start driving. Who's driving? I don't want to drive. I want to open this package yeah. while we're we're driving. I'll, I'll drive. But I'm also chatty. Like, so, so what do you guys think about this? It's pretty bizarre. I mean, it's not unusual in our line of work, but a 16-digit number? Sounds like a lottery winning number or uh yes. I mean I've I've heard of bank accounts being that long. Yeah, well, you, if the, the thing is that he's saying it has an effect on people. It's uh I mean he wasn't informed, but um I mean it, it seemed like I mean it it reminds me almost of like the, the Russian sleeper agents where he said treat them like hostiles they need to be taken care of like some sort of brainwashing yeah exactly it's it's having an effect on people the, the cognition that's why we need to not be able to understand it you know what it it reminds me of and i'm maybe i shouldn't even speculate what it reminds me of uh speculate I'm, away. I'm not even gonna say it I, it's, it's yep. ridiculous it's something from an old monster movie Oh, Agent Agent Lyndon, you have piqued my curiosity thoroughly. Well, the Jews believe that if you could ever figure out the name of God, uh, it would have power. There have been a number of movies that have dealt with that, but it's supposed to be like a 250 number name. Yeah, that's what that's you... Uh... you you write it on a piece of paper and you stick it in the mouth of a clay statue and it becomes a living golem. Mm -hmm. uh, Interesting. But, uh, well, yeah, what could be so dangerous about a 60 digit number? Sounds like, you know, somebody would have run across this number and 60 is just a number. <laughs> yeah. Well, 16 digits, there are billions of potential combinations that this could be. Yeah. Yeah. I heard yeah, it once. It might not that, be too far off. It might just be turning a bunch of people into golems. Or oh, and since it's not just it, well, it, yeah, he says it's not just anybody. It's somebody who needs advanced mathematics. So maybe the sequence itself is an interval that somehow unlocks. I don't. Know. It just sounds fucking crazy. Mm. Well. Agent Goat, what is? Why don't you tell us what's in that package? I'm, again, my curiosity is killing me. 
<laughs> yeah, what is in my what is in my box that I found? Uh, that was the the a bit of just the way I I phrased it. It was in there with just uh like a a cardboard cutout in like uh like a little a little note that had like magazine letters that was the information for the rendezvous point. I made it oh, sound okay. a lot more a lot more cool than <laughs> <laughs> it actually yeah, I, was. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No worries. Gotcha. Yeah, just like uh, just you know. So what do you guys think? Should we like get a can of paint and just maybe leave I, it up to the I, artist? I, I yeah. I'm worried if we do something a little bit too obvious, you know, that we might alert agent Cret canors. Yeah. I'll start you know, typing out some of the spellings uh I'll, I'll type out the spellings of those two federal agents names because neither of them were on that handout that i uh, posted there, there before there might be a <laughs> chemical way i can uh remove the uh the numbers that maybe will dissolve slowly but quickly well yeah i'm yeah, thinking I, we I just make a there. distraction when everybody's looking at the distraction we throw a water balloon full of paint on it. Well, I'm sure it'll all be quarantined off and forensics units will be there, or if not, they have been there. Um, but I'm know. sure it's going to be all quarantined off. I could slip in with a quarantine, with a forensic, you know, full full outfit. You wouldn't notice, you wouldn't know who it is, per se. Maybe put some, like a paint thinner, a modified paint thinner on it. Something. That we could actually, it may be slow, but we'll, well dissolve it by the end of the night. We don't. We don't need to overcomplicate it. Destroying it on the ground isn't going to be the issue. We're late to the party, and people have already taken photographs. That's where Probably our job not. is. I think tracking down all of that is. I mean, it seems like an impossible task to me right see, now. Yeah, I don't see holding that contagion that contagion back. I mean, uh, if there's reporters there, they're broadcasting it now. Whether or not they got the whole sequence of numbers is yeah and, and, you uh, know, luckily and i might be needing to spend time in like the police uh office or something going through the records already i don't know we need to get but, a jump on that but considering it is a crime scene as long as no neighbors has taken a picture of it which i doubt they had i every the reporters and stuff are going to be quarantined away from they're going to be away from the actual victims yeah. but the police so, don't know to not allow the thing to be photographed there could be uh for uh, reporters you know 50 feet away taking pictures that Probably are getting that about number a boom coming down and, and it is flat just like what agent um brain freeze was saying right. and a long digit and it was spray painted so you would have to almost get above it to kind of get a good hmm. picture of it a helicopter perhaps well, what it's, i know it's, Another it's on an interstate, there might be an overpass. So we well, we need to get there and assess the situation, obviously. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, we need to find the kid's house and see. He, they said he was a mathematician student. Yeah, that'll be our. So next. hey, that he that could, could have, be where we start. Let, he could, what do you think context, about that? Columbia University. Yeah, uh, he could have from Alliance for, to drive from Phil, this location, Philadelphia, to Alliance. About forty minutes from there to get to Columbia, that's a two-hour drive. Oh, right. Dang. But he might have this thing written down on his notes in his room without and other people. Yeah. And most likely, his roommate, if he's got one, might also be a math student. So we there's, don't have there's to take this math. as a virus. He was contaminated yeah. with something, and anyone that's else a, could come in contact with him. So we need to quarantine that and identify any other vectors that may have gone out. Um, well, if but yeah, I'm, I'm going to start on that some kind of thinner or start thinking about yeah. how I would remove this or at least um, blur it. And do you okay. think that that uh, that our handler is implying that seeing the number and knowing math drives you to start murdering people? Or I think that we can spin this like either the, the kid was on PCP or LSD oh, yeah. or somebody in well, college. Yeah. But how how Agent Grant said like a virus, I think that's exactly how we should think about it. I um my my specialty is uh looking at 
cover-ups throughout history where paranormal stuff has happened you know just trying to figure out the real thing and uh yeah the the concept is an info hazard something where just knowing about it is a danger and i believe that's what we're encountering here where the it just does something to their mind once they think about this idea for the first time it changes them potentially forever and i think that's what we need to stop and obviously he had to have learned it from somewhere it's not like he just spontaneously created it no you think the delta green might know a little bit something about it since they they realize it's extremely dangerous yeah it it flagged them awful quickly yeah to contact us i am gonna start just like i said googling and if we have to stop someplace um maybe one of the walmarts or box stores of some sort to get some uh something. Some kind of uh, thinner paint thinners. Um, yeah, stop a quick trip to the hardware store. Um, what time yeah. is it right now? Um, so you arrived at about the, the briefing began at about seven, and you spoke to Watchdog like that was a less than fifteen minute meeting. Yeah. And you didn't even ask very many questions. It was probably more like ten minutes at most. Um, so with this in mind, I, I'm just you're projected to arrive. Probably at about, if you make the hardware store stop, you'd arrive at about 8.15 p.m. Your absolute latest, based on what Watchdog told you, would be around like 8.30. So you don't want to make another stop. Right. But you could fit that in. All right. Yeah, I'm going to grab um, whatever chemicals I think is appropriate. You've have got a, a really high pharmacy and chemistry. chemistry score. Yeah. So I don't see a need to do any kind of rolling for that. Um, and I'm not an expert on paint thinner myself, so I assume you get some materials that would be like paint thinner that's a vaguely yellowish color. Yeah, that spray good paint to me. or spray. You know, I, I'll have it all set up, and then um, I'll have that forensic. The um, I forget what they're called, but the full suit, hazmat um, suit. Yeah, hazmat um, suit. but to uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, let's make our rendezvous. Okay. Anything else in this hardware store we need? That's, I mean, we were talking about disguises. This isn't really the place. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I can have my picture, the picture that is the same as me, <laughs> that they gave me, the ID, even with the false name. So I really am feeling uncomfortable about that. Uh, we're not that far away. I am an agent, um, an FBI agent. I do not want to get recognized. Well, yeah. well, there's like, you know, 20,000 FBI agents, right? What are the odds? Sure. That is <laughs> as good of chemists as I am. Well, I mean, even if you got <laughs> recognized, couldn't you say you were on a special mission and maybe Delta Possibly Green as long has as I don't some... Give a fake name. <laughs> you know, under, undercover in the FBI, don't you? Not to other FBI agents. Oh. All right. Seems like a problem. Okay. So, throughout the throughout this about 40 minute drive, uh Interstate 76 from Philadelphia over the Delaware River into the outlying suburbs of the New Jersey side. And for a majority of the trip, you are traveling to Alliance on Route 55 itself until you get to exit 35B to Alliance. When you see it, before you even read the sign, you see the red and blue flashing light of distant and nearby police. Um, and you can see as you're taking this exit that just a little bit ahead of the highway, there's like, you know, a good 100, 200 meters where a whole lane, the, the rightmost lane of the highway has been entirely blockaded and shut down. So. Highway kind of had a bit of bottlenecking going up to that exit, but Route 55 isn't a crazy enough highway to get that to cause stop-and-go traffic. Anyways, uh, you go down the exit, and though that act, that even going down that exit alone is a little bit slow and bottlenecked, um, but as soon as you get off the exit, that's pretty much right where the address of the Ridgeway family is 22 maurice river parkway unmistakable given the police around the parameter and the crowd swarming the property 
Two bright floodlights have been set up, one on the front lawn and another near the highway, lighting up the scene where they see tent, along with a few cars and officers standing near this tent. Um, there are probably three, maybe four dozen civilians crowded along the perimeter, enough that all the shifting bodies can kind of make the... Uh, the the yellow tape that's serving as the barrier a little bit hard to see sometimes local civilians and what seems to be passerby passerby but uh, is mostly journalists from various networks you know CNN NBC Fox News all those big names local and national get it here to get a scoop on this bizarre crime and as watchdog was warning you press vans clogging the nearby streets um even from here you can see that alliance itself as a little town Really not anything more than a couple strips of restaurants, gas stations, and some large shops surrounded by sparse lots that were once farms. Uh, two large motels you can see from here sit on the east and west of town, uh, a Super 8 and a Motel 6. Um, and as this, you are pulling in off the, the highway and off to the side, no one's paying any mind to your vehicle, despite this car, uh, despite this crowd. Uh, what do you do? Um if we're if we're near the crowd of reporters i uh i say all right i need to get out <clears throat> i'm gonna mingle with the crowd see if anybody's seen the, or hear if anybody's seen the number see if they've got any footage of the number <clears throat> but that way i'll i'll be here and you guys can go in officially and i'll be in the crowd as a you know a roadie or whatever they call the assistance of, you know, nobody do, recognized me. Do you guys think it would be a good idea to make some sort of distraction while one of us defaces the number? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, let's assess the let's, situation. Yeah. Let's first. assess before, uh, but no, maybe a distraction as a uh, backup, but I suspect we'll be allowed to go see the numbers. And if I, if I made my, you know, little paint thinner correctly, it should blur them by uh, by morning or within a few hours. We should be well away from all this. So I'll hop out. Somebody else needs to drive. Grant will pull, you know. Okay. He'll jump in the seat. Um, we'll keep in touch via. Uh, so I hop out. I'm in black, so I sort of blend. Um and my intention is to, I'm hoping that there will be, you know, reporters going, this is live from, uh, you know, CTBG, you know, Pennsylvania. Uh, and yeah. And hear what they're saying. What you're seeing right here right now is mostly, you know, lots of pictures being taken. Uh, the cops around the perimeter are making sure that they don't get anywhere near uh, to the house or to that secondary Scene that's at the edge of the property encroaching onto the highway where that privacy tent has been set up. Uh, and the current current questions are just like, well, we were led to believe that the entire Ridgeway family may be dead. Do you have any comment? And, uh, you know, the police are staying quiet about that and they're asking, the name of the killer is, let's be announced. What did he spray paint on the ground? Neighbors say the numbers were involved. Um, yeah. It, it's stuff like that. It, from what you can tell, at least on this glance, it seems that. People have don't they they're not entirely they barely know that it even numbers okay. that was spray painted. All right, and, and I'm, I'm definitely based on spawning. context clues. It looks like where the numbers are spray painted is where that privacy tent is on the highway. Okay. Yeah, they the have rest of you tent over. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh no, they have the tent over the the scene. So perfect. Yeah. Uh, but the actual parameter of the house itself uh, is roped off. And um, from what you can tell, uh, they, you know, there's some police cars on the lawn, along with a similar Federal Bureau-looking car parked in the driveway. But I assume the other four of you uh, want to just park your car somewhere nearby and approach the blockade, or not all four of you, because Monocle is not on the case. Actually, that's a good question. Monocle, what do you want to do right now? I think um, I'm going to stay in the crowd also. Um, not not drawing too much attention to myself, just kind of um, 
waiting for any kind of opportunity or Just chance to talk again. Playing it cool, being an assuming, taking in your surroundings. There's plenty of other people like that. You know, it's not just journalists here. There's some neighbors too. Um, and no, no one's paying any mind to you. The situation is much too hot in other ends for them to care about a random, random historian. The other three of you, uh, I presume you park your car somewhere nearby here um, and openly approach the blockade. Am I wrong? No, I mean, just call it. I'm pulling up just like we're supposed to, um, parking near the other feds card. And if anyone stops us, obviously just flash, flash the badge. And, yeah. Uh, uh, and that, that's what it gets to is like, you know, there's probably a bit when you're walking through the crowd where initially some people aren't, aren't paying you any mind. But when you get especially, you know, marching in an authoritative manner towards the barrier, there might be some guys that are flashing their cameras and being like, who are you? Blah, 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 blah. But I assume you're not going to say anything. Oh, no. No. I, uh, I I would like to um, just say, l listen, we're not going to comment on anything. We're not going to comment on what happened at the back of the house. We're not going to – I'm going to try to distract them away from the tent by slipping something out. Most of the time, the, the people that are actually crowding around this are more sort of near the parameter of the house itself. Um, as the parameter is roped off towards the highway, the, the, the way the yellow tape is set up is that no one is really able to get close to the, the privacy tent. And oh, so, so as that a result, most be. people are hoarding around the house. Okay. Um, though obviously there's going to be some stragglers of some people trying to get an angle nearby. Um, but unfortunately, you know, since it's a tent, you know, even if they flew a drone overhead, they're not going to be able to see anything. Um, but as you approach the uh, the barrier, there is an officer there that you know holds out a hand. Is just like, stop! What's going on? You you with the case? We are expecting some agents. Hold up the uh, hold up the badge and the ID okay. and just connect. she she Walk does through. this this officer she does demand to see each of your badges. Um, but after a brief examination of each, she nods, lets you through the tape, and into the scene one by one. Agents Kenor and Gant uh, are waiting for you inside the house. I'd get moving if I was you. Uh, we've been holding this scene down for hours. Uh, Kenor mentioned that he was getting really tired as well, so I, I'd he'd appreciate a hustle. I'm going to, if no one's stopping me, I'm just going to tell Goat and Brain Freeze to go ahead. I'm going to just take a assessment of the situation and Yep. Walk around to each of the, uh, you know, where the tents are and stuff. And uh, okay. so you want a beeline for the tent? Yep. Okay. Brain freeze and goat. Are you going inside the house? Yes. Okay. I'm going to put the um, suit on, the the white um, hazmat type suit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, so you're, 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 you're taking that out and putting it out just like what? Oh, yeah. Openly on the lawn? Yep, just as okay. if you would. I, you know, find a spot. Maybe there's a tree or something. But you know, I, I don't have to. It goes over my clothes. It's just a pair yeah. of overalls. There are definitely some points you're doing that where there's a handful of people that then look at you and smack cameras in there. There's like some annoying reporter in front of the camera and saying, "Behind me here, we we believe we see a federal agent equipped going into <laughs> hazmat materials. Has there been dangerous materials distributed here at the crime scene? Or is the health of the people of Alliance, New Jersey, at risk?" Will the police give us a comment? And, you know, some of the nearby officers are just like, no, calm down. Get those cameras away. A man doesn't appreciate recording. It's a, typical, it's a typical thing to see with, uh, you know, your your forensic scientists that go out to a crime scene. They don't want to contaminate it with anything of their own that they're bringing in. Whatever so. the truth is, Enrico Save of Channel 6 News will get down to the bottom of it. Shams, you saw what I just wrote. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, with what I respond, don't we'll 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 see the result of that test when we actually all reassembled and know it's not footage. It's going to be cut out. I'm going to ask you to roll charisma. Yeah. Um. Yeah. With uh my role here, um, I mean, I'm expecting not to have too much go down for me. I'm just kind of waiting for uh like a, us to regroup, but um. 
I'll have Monica like kind of go to the end of the table because you said that people are mostly near the house. I just want to be. Yeah, I mean, obviously, especially now that there's a guy changing into a hazmat suit, there's starting to be more people crowned more towards that backyard towards the privacy tent. Yeah, yeah, that's um, perfect. I I want to go like towards the the roadside. I'm not going to sneak in or anything. I just want to make sure that nobody else is. Yeah, yeah, Uh, just just really land low. The stragglers that are now being like, oh, there's a guy with a hazmat vest. (laughs) <laughs> yep yep so okay. I'm, I'm good just hanging out and unlike Lytton, you're not sowing rumors here you're just right. observing i'm 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 in there as i'm dressed in black i can sort of stand in the crowd and uh when they're having conversations i'll be like well i heard that the kid was on pcp well i heard that he was you know having an affair with the wife just yeah the and more because... the more garbage the more it's this is a chaotic situation. You rolled an 03 on your charisma, and you've got a good stealth score. To me, that says that you're spreading these rumors, and then that someone's just like, oh, really? But through some distraction, they're not being able to get you for further comment. You're you're slipping in and out of the crowd. You're just kind of causing uh, some chaos here. Now there, there's probably at least one point where someone's just like, rumors are flying that, th- that maybe this, whoever was this murderer was, they may have been on drugs, was was Ms. Ridgeway having an affair? Like, I mean, the, the, and and you know, then it's echo chamber, <laughs> and it starts just causing more stuff that gets even more spun out. And all they call me of... the crawling chaos, <laughs> <laughs> chaos that crawls right up your back. Goat and brain freeze, on the other hand are going inside. The front door is unlocked. It's a mostly regular suburban home. Aside from the kitchen, uh, that's a gruesome scene of carnage with the bodies. Seven bodies laying about, blood, buckshot, slug holes, all over the place you know there are some cops moving around moving evidence there's some boxes where some stuff has been bagged some forensic attendants nearby on standby um interestingly the stove a 1970s tan and green monstrosity was struck by buckshot and uh, the old analog clock on it is stuck at 2 29 p.m but seeing this horrible scene inside this house actually provokes a sand rolling from violence so go and brain freeze. Give me that roll. Okay. Oh dear. Also, <laughs> among the handful of cops in here at the edge of the kitchen are two men in suits. That is a failure on my part. On a failure that is one d four sand loss from violence. Regular check pass. Mark. Regular Ding. pass. Lose nothing. You're a doctor. You've seen worse. Goat, on the other hand, yeah, you're more about, you know, dealing with funky stuff in tunnels rather than, oh, here's dead kids. Yeah. It's... Makes me, makes me pause as I come through the door. Yeah, not enough to elicit a super extreme reaction, but a little bit of pale in the face, maybe some slight shuddering, awkwardly pausing. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking around. Of the two men in suits, one of them, based on his vibe, the being the man in charge, uh, he is a middle-aged African-American man, tall and thin, steel-rimmed aviator, sunglasses hanging around near his tie, clad in a black suit. The other man is more on the end of short and stocky, young, probably in his early 30s or so, his deep green eyes are just a little too close together, and that makes him look kind of slow. He's wearing a charcoal gray suit, and uh, he has a pair of tinted sunglasses also hooked on his collar. And the two of them uh, notice the two of you um, nodding to the officers. Uh, the taller African-American man speaks. Uh, thank you, thank you. I could, could you give us a moment? And they turn to you, this older man speaking. Ah, yes, uh, the backup from Quantico, I presume. Supervisory Special Agent Aiden Kenor. This is my uh, right-hand man, William Gant. 
Snor extends a handshake to you, Goat. Yep. It's um, uh, very good to meet you. Um, I'm Agent Goat. Um, this is uh, Agent Brace, Brain Freeze. Um, we're here wonderful, to... wonderful. Uh, and Gant, sheepishly grinning, also exchanges handshakes with the two of you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Knorr has a very firm handshake. Gant, not so much. A little bit of anxiety there. Uh, so, how was the trip from Quantico? They didn't make you drive, did you? <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we actually did drive. Um, unfortunately, my purchase card is over the limit so yeah well uh, that's unfortunate um i was told that there was a there was going to be a grant here as well uh yeah um uh, agent grant is uh outside actually he decided to to inspect the the tent before coming in oh i see well i would have appreciated the conversation but admittedly it's a real mess out there so i don't blame him for wanting to go and Get a real scoop on the the mess on the highway first. Yeah, he's um, a man about business, you know. Indeed, indeed. Um, and then Gant speaks up. So, so wait, none of you are uh, Doctor Comox. Um, uh, no, neither of us are Doctor Comox. Gant and uh, and Kenor look at each other, and then uh, Kenor chuckles, but <laughs> oh yeah. We got a message from Quantico uh, saying that we were sending up uh, one Dr. Sarah Comox, uh, a crypto analyst for the FBI, and uh, a real math whiz, from what I've been told. Uh, oh. I don't know why they're sending two. I mean, I was told that you were a, a mathematics consultant, right, Goat? Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, they make really strange decisions. You might yeah, want to have well, her. But Gant, you're uh, you're misremembering. Remember, the email said that she'd be here tomorrow morning, not tonight. These guys are just uh, the first of what's to come, apparently. I mean, I don't know why we need so many FBI agents for something like this. If that's really what the feds think, that's the best use of our tax dollars, then by all means. But uh, have you ever worked with Dr. Comox before, Goat? Uh, no, I have not, actually. So um, I'm looking forward to meeting her. Maybe uh, maybe we can exchange math problems. <laughs> well, we've got plenty of problems here to solve, believe me. Looks like it. Um, so, what's your current work in theory? Well, other than clearly someone in D.C. having their panties in a bunch about this case, um, not sure... Uh, this seems pretty open and shut, if you ask me, aside from the number. Uh, the killer is obvious and confirmed. We have enough witness to know 100% it was him. Um, we haven't announced the name of Michael Way yet to the public. We're going to probably need to do that and confirm the deaths of the Ridgeways tomorrow with a press conference. We've secured the bodies, cause of death as expected, uh, bagged the murder weapon, shotgun in one of those crates over there. He points. Uh, no doubt that Way's prints are all over it. It's just that that number, and you know, DC told me that they were sending a you know a team to look up at it to look at it. You guys, ask yeah. me. This all looks like nonsense. Doesn't have to do with anything that happened here. This kid flipped his shit and massacred people. But it's an assumption. We don't know. We haven't even gone to Columbia University and examined his belongings. Began questioning his background. It's all just been trying to keep this situation here managed. All those fucking vultures outside, and we've got Enrico Save here too. Yeah, but it's a real mess. Yeah. Um God, I mean, please do feel free to look around, do whatever you need to do to get the information you need. Um, we're here to help you as much as possible and close this case. And he sighs a bit rubbing his temples. I, I, sorry to cut things short, but I've been here for hours on end. I need to go get some sleep. Before you go, could I ask you a quick favor just to uh, send yeah. Dr. Comax by to talk to Agent Goat before she goes to the crime scene? We would really appreciate I, that. She, I don't think she's expected to get here until uh, tomorrow morning at least. Um, and even before she gets here, uh, I, I think it would be wise that we meet 
all of us again at the uh, Alliance Police Department around 8 a.m. Go over whatever use you guys found tonight. Discuss about this more in depth. Prepare for the press conference and what it is that we're going to announce. Um, I, I think that was BI's. I've just I, I've been up for 15 hours straight here. I woke up a little bit earlier than normal today. And, you know, when you get older, it gets hard to push hours like that. Um, but Billy here, he's still got some fight in there. Don't you, Billy? And then uh, Gant is like, <laughs> yes, sir. Um, and at that point, uh, Knorr is just like, just, um, you know, when you're done here with the, with just let forensics know that they can take the bodies and bag them. Uh, they've been here a little longer than I'd like. Realistically, the sooner we bag them, the better. Uh, but, you know, do what you need to do. I'm not a forensic pathologist. Um, <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, you all tomorrow at 8 a.m. I'd like to meet Grant then. I'll introduce you all to the local police chief, Upton Weeks. He's been very cooperative throughout this investigation so far. And um, we'll talk about our plans from there. I'll be staying over at the uh, the Motel 6 on the west side of town uh, if you need me. Uh, I think they made reservations for you there as well. Um, here's my business card. You can keep in touch. You can get his phone number, contact information. Thanks. But unless you want to try and stop him, Kanor is going to going to leave. Uh, I don't 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 stop him. Okay. Um just want to now cut back to Grant. Grant, uh, at this point you've definitely put on your hazmat suit and are heading towards the uh privacy tent, correct? Um yeah, and if there's a if there's a a cop around. Definitely. When you get approached, there are two cops standing in that immediate nearby area. That's fine. Uh I'm gonna get a cup of coffee, two sugars. I'll be a little bit. Um, okay. Uh I mean I saw Officer Johnson there um ask for your badge. Could we please just see it again? This is a hot situation. We've just gotta do this by the book. In the I'm in my suit. I I'll I'll back up, you know, I'm as sterile as I can be right now and, and just complain the entire time. Okay. I'm if you if you want to do the it. if you want to go around the, the complaining route, um you could roll me your choice of either uh persuade or charisma to see if, you know, you could care in the way out of not making you immediately flash your badge. Charisma forty four I got a forty four. Okay. So critical success, uh, you know, as you're complaining about that, it's like, OK, you know what? We're not medical experts. I understand we, you don't want to go have to resecure your suit and all the like again. Wouldn't, it's our bad. Uh, please just go on in. But that cup of coffee would be really nice. And maybe a couple others. I have um, other agents that just went in. But and I won't listen for whatever he says. I'm just going to walk into uh, the tent. Gary. Will you will you get the this this hazmat agent a coffee, please? Uh, Okay, and he carries away temporarily, but there's still the other cop outside. Yeah, I'm gonna go in and uh, yeah, start assessing the situation. Okay, so it's a pretty simple scene inside this tent. You know, overall, only really has like a ten foot diameter, circular all around. It's not a large amount of space. It's what's about is in that space that really matters. On the on the uh, on the road. Not far from each other, two bodies, one of an 18-year-old kid and um, a another young man, though it's hard to immediately tell his age and identity because his body is entirely headless with brain matter sprayed nearby. Um, a chalk outline marks where the shotgun was found, and spray printed in yellow is a 16-digit sequence of numbers. Nine nine two zero point two two nine nine eight nine two one two period three three three. And seeing these dead bodies and this NC does provoke a sand roll for you. Unless you're adapted to violence. No, I'm not, but I, I got a fifteen. Okay, you're good. You've seen worse. Yeah. Um, but there's something about those numbers, just looking at them, the second you do, it's like, 
your heart misses a beat and you just feel that pit of anxiety forming in your stomach. Hmm. You don't like them. Well, I'm not going to stare at them much longer than when I have to. I'm going to, you know, apply my the spray to it. Okay. Now, okay. with the spray, you see, if you were just trying to, like, subtly alter the crime scene or altering the digits or something like that, I'd call for, like, a forensics or criminology role. But you've already made this pace, and I feel like it wouldn't make sense to call for a role to just, like, apply the, uh, yeah, the I'm system. hoping it's just a lineup I can spray on it. it it's not. Yeah, really I mean, as, as long as you, you know, put some time in here to make sure you're applying this carefully oh, yeah. over the numbers and not just wantonly like splattering. Oh, it I've got all the time. I've got hours. So, yeah, I'll take the time. Um, I also look at the body so that well. by the time you're done with your mixture, the numbers look as they were before, just a little wetter. But six hours from now, it's just going to be a yellow stain. That's what I hope. Um, and then I'm going to turn to the bodies and just uh, just double check. Uh, yeah. Go through, see if there's so something. So your is. forensic score is 70%, correct? Right. So you don't need to roll. Um, Michael Ridgway was shot in the back with a slug round that pierced a vital artery. He bled out in less than a minute. Uh, Michael Way clearly shot himself in the head, just put it in his mouth, buckshot, eviscerating most of it, leaving him but without a neck. Uh, interestingly, y you go up and that you, you see that with Michael Way, that like there's absolutely nothing in his pockets. And then considering that you see the outline of a shotgun on the ground, you think that like, okay, they've, they've, they've probably bagged all of his evidence um, somewhere. Does clearly, he have, have they look at the body any i mean uh lifted up shirts or at least the sleeves um does he have tattoos does he have anything um there is a startling hair? lack of tattoos um he i mean if anything you know, he's not particularly physically in shape either like i wouldn't say that he necessarily has like a dad bod but you know it's a uh, it's the classic build of a nerd you know a little bit skinny not too muscular maybe slightly fatty um you're and you know looking at him you don't even see signs of like clearly this guy didn't even like consistently work out or anything like that hands are soft everything is yeah like no like his he doesn't have very many calluses on his hands he's got like those classic long spindly academic fingers yeah so he doesn't have any markings of any gangs or any, nope. any affiliations nothing like that court, and no jewelry or anything that would unless, be unless he had a tattoo on his forehead because there's not a forehead anymore <laughs> that's right um yeah if i've uh exhausted all the it, what i can look at i will just back out and uh ask for my coffee between yeah i mean by the time you get out there we'll just say that's right when this scrambly guy is like we don't we don't have a <laughs> Uh, it, it was quicker for me just to go to Duncan's than to go all the way back to the goddamn police station. Oh, excellent. That's, that's, just like a, that's just like a basic Duncan coffee, normal, quote unquote, normal amount of cream and sugar. Did you? What sugar are they both men? Known as coffee is. All right, I'll but just turn the officer. Have you, did you look at the the body? Do you see those numbers? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't really know what that, why, why that kid sprayed them down. Maybe it's like some kind of like political message or he's making some kind of a statement with it or like, a I, I really don't know, but it's, it's weird. I mean, why would you kill people and spray down a bunch of numbers? Uh, it, it might be a terrorist thing. Uh, I've got a connection. There's an old case, maybe in the eighties, this brotherhood. Um, they used to spray paint numbers, uh, kind of a designation of their kill. Um, it was very odd. That's why I came here directly. I thought maybe this was connected to that old case. Interesting. And right at this point, we'll say that this has probably only been, you spent probably about 10 minutes in that tent between the careful painting and closely examining the bodies. This is right at the point when this conversation and when you see an official FBI looking tall African American man leave the front door, uh, get in the car and drive away towards the rest of Alliance. Okay. Um, yeah, no one's stopping me. I just wanted to drop that little distraction to these officers and 
you know, thank them for what they're doing and head into the house. Okay. Um, make me a luck roll. Okay. Uh, 71. Okay. I'll take note of that for future reference. So, um, pretty much just a moment after, um, after Kanor leaves and when Gant just looks like, okay, so here's some of what we've got bagged and ready so far. Uh, what we found on Michael Way's body. And he strolls over to an evidence box. And right when he's putting on some gloves here, this is right when um, Agent Grant comes in. Um, still probably decked out in his hazmat suit, aside oh, yeah. from like, no, the helmet, no. which you've probably taken off the sit No, No, coffee. it's not the helmet. It's more of a cloth, a paper, yeah. that can, like a hoodie that I could actually pull tight. So you can just see my kind of eyes with <laughs> and my glasses. So it's kind of hard to recognize me, but um, yeah. Uh, Gant, uh, you know, right when he's putting this, he's just like, Jesus, you, you've really suited yourself up there, buddy. Standard issue, you should know. You should have a pair in your car. I mean, we do, but um, uh, you must be you must be Agent Grant. Um, I'm Special Agent William Gant, uh, Kenor's second command. You, you just missed him, the poor man. He's been working long hours, and he really needs to go and get some sleep. This job does Yes, me. He gets really cranky once uh, he's been up for a little too long, so I think it's in all of our best interest that he went. He left for now. <laughs> I do have my Dunkin' coffee. And I'm sipping on that nice, hot, large Dunkin' coffee. <laughs> Beautiful. Does this agent seem a little nervous to me? Roll human intelligence. All right. All three of you may do that. Another 70. Nope. All right. Thank God I have a hu super high human. Um Oh, no, wait, I don't have a super high. Could I use psychotherapy instead? Yeah, in this particular case, if you're looking for anxiety, I, you could use psychotherapy. Okay, yeah. so that's a critical success. <laughs> ah. There's going to be a critical failure. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, this man is not clinically mentally ill in any way, shape, or form. He's definitely a bit nervous about the situation, though th there's a few things you can tell here, and I'm going to... Some of this has to do with the fact that you got a critical in that what anxiety and awkwardness he's projecting is just like this is a stressful situation and he clearly hasn't been out of Quantico for that long. Here's another here's another interesting thing about that critical success, though, is that you've only spoken for this guy for a few minutes, but you're starting to build a psych profile for him. You obviously want to spend some more time with him to fish for this. But just from some of the personality tells you can see from so far, this might this guy might actually be a potentially reliable friendly if he was recruited correctly. You know, your case officer was explicitly warning you about Kenor. He didn't say anything about Gant. He's a good boy. Just throwing that out there. Um, uh, just look up. Um, well, how did the uh, the perp, the Mister Way, get here? Did he have a car? Yes, um, he drove. Uh, so uh, he, what, what we found on him was uh, his wallet, his keys, and uh, a flip phone. And with his gloved hands, he holds some little baggies that have all of this. Um, these keys are to a 2009 uh, Honda Civic that uh, was in his registration. We searched the vehicle completely, and it's currently impounded at the local police department. Uh, it didn't really seem like there was anything of note within and around it, but it certainly seems like that's what he drove here to commit the crime. Um, he reaches from the bag and produces the wallet with his gloved hands and opens it to you three. Uh, the ID inside is a California driver's license with an address in Altamira, uh, California. L birthday listed as nine, not, uh, September 9th, 1989. Agent Grant, you immediately, as start as you see that, you feel that sense of pinging anxiety again. And for just a second there on the wallet where it said, you realize, you know, how it's listed, it's 9989. Nine, nine. Those numbers slightly shift a little bit. 
and it, you can tell like i mean like those are those are numbers in that sequence he spray painted it you feel a that sudden weird sense of anxiety but the picture itself depicts this young clean cut asian man um, and then Gant produces a second ID from the wallet, a Columbia University student ID um, slash swipe card. And on the back above the mag swipe strip, it says John J. Hall, Fu Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science. We haven't had the opportunity to visit his dorm yet, but uh, as you you know, Wei was a student at Columbia, and I'm sure that there'll be some more clues and insight to his motives there or or something. Um, it, it clearly seems as though Michael didn't care much for smartphones, as the flip phone was the only cellular device we found on him. Uh, and yeah, and then we've just got the Honda Civic. Oh, and the uh, the shotgun over there in the bag over here. Um, we've just been so swamped with this that we haven't had time to even run the number on it. Yeah, I was about to. Uh, I'm all suited up. Um, I, if you don't mind, I'll turn to the other agents. Uh, just take a few minutes and uh, kind of get that number and maybe any numbers off the phone. Yeah, um, the phone. Um, as of Have right now, had... see, I'm not really a, a tech guy, right? But this thing is password protected, and I mean, if you want to give it a crack, you know, by all means. I don't know. I, and if, you know, if, you're, if you can't get anything from it, we'll just send it to the text, and I'm sure then they'll be able to extract the data. But right here, right now, I'm stumped. Okay, yeah, just give us a few. Give me a few minutes, and I'll um, I'll go through this. Um, if, what's the number? Is it? How many digits in the number to unlock that flip phone? Four. Maybe try the first um, 9920. You pick up the phone. I'm going to try to get away from every, um, you know, we don't want to contaminate this. I'm going to open up these evidence bags. If, you know, give me a few minutes. Maybe go sit down. Take okay. Shotgun, um, quick question. Go to another room. Before you start cracking with the phone, though, um, do you all want to look at the bodies to do an extended examination, or can I tell forensics it's clear to start packing them up? Uh, um, we'd kind of like to, I'd like to kind of look around if that's okay. I won't be too long, I promise. Okay. Um, if you need me for anything, um, by all means, he hands you a um, card with his phone number on it, and he's just like, I'm going to go check out with the cops outside and make sure they've been keeping the vultures down. I'll be back in just a few minutes. And then Gant just runs outside just to... Um, and if you look up the window, as you see that he's not being shady. He's doing as he says. And he's just managing the crime scene a little bit and checking Perfect. in on everyone. If he's gone... Have we yeah. been left alone? There are still like like a, like two or three police officers that are just like wandering around the house. But like they're not... I mean, you they defer to you. You have authority over the investigation. Yeah. If you yeah. tell them to like go stand over there or something, I mean, give as us long the you're not give us the room. Weird about it, they'll do it. Just give us the room. Um. Okay, so you've got the room. Just for for fun's sake, you want to say that it's the kitchen with all the bodies and the shot clock. Yeah. All right. So you take up the phone and you enter nine nine two zero. I want you to make me a sanity roll, Agent Grant. <laughs> uh, that is a twenty-five. That's yeah. Who's who's in the kitchen? Sorry, it is um, Grant, Grant yeah. Brain Freeze, and Goat. Um, and actually, before I address that a little more, that's a good reminder. Uh, Linton and Monocle. The situation outside largely hasn't changed too much. You know, since that one guy left, and now you're seeing this other federal agent going around and just checking in on everyone from your two's perspective the situation hasn't changed too much other than like you saw uh granted the hazmat suit like go into the tent well, a guy left he came back out a guy handed him coffee he went into the house at this point i don't think there's much i can continue to do except just listen and see if anything comes up or anybody talks but Eventually, I'll work my way over to where the guys parked their car and just stand in the dark 
until they're ready to go. Okay. I just wanted to check in on you to make sure that I'm giving you the opportunity to do something should you want to do it. But Grant, um, you're okay with the fact that um, that unlocks the phone. Clearly, Wei just set that to be whatever political ideology is wrapped within this number. Um, and you unlock it. So there's really not too much going on here as you're flipping through it. Um, Wei wasn't much of a texter. And when he did it, it was either to his mother, Miriam, his sister, Imogen, or two people um, in identified uh, in his contacts as Anthony Desjardin and Molly Frank. And I'll type those names out in the chat. Uh, his call history is similar, but with the inclusion of the occasional business or school-related calls. And based on the information exchanged in the calls and messages, it looks like Anthony and Molly are fellow students at Columbia and the only friends that he's in consistent contact with. As it was a flip phone, there are no social media apps installed. There is an email function on the phone, but a quick browse notes that it was rarely used and mostly filled with spam. This wasn't like a university email, clearly just like a free account that came with the phone. Um, and just even in just like five, ten minutes looking through it, finding any evidence, there on this phone there seems to be no evidence of distribution. Okay, yeah, as long as yeah, as long as it, he didn't text that number out. Nope, no evidence of that. I will pass it to Goat and Brain Freeze if you want to do anything else with this. Um, I do want to check the serial, get the serial numbers on the shotgun before we. Yeah. Um, so the shotgun that is um, the the cops can point out exactly which of the boxes it's stored in. Um, it is a twelve gauge Remington eight seventy. Uh, it looks well oiled and maintained. The serial number is two o two two nine nine eight. And let's see. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. Do, it is. What I assumed it would be. <laughs> off the top of my head, goodness, I should. I, I still haven't. My character sheets are saved on my phone. I haven't saved them on my computer, so I'm not remembering all the numbers. Of you three, does anyone immediately have firearms sixty percent or more? If not, you can make a roll. I got a regular pass. I didn't cool. pass. Um, make, remember that if you fail a skill, to check mark that because um, though I feel like two hour blocks is too allow it's too short to allow an improvement every session because it's a longer uh, longer scenario. I'm going to allow some skill improvements uh, halfway through. But um, anyways, that firearm success notes that the Remington 870 is a common model used in the military and especially with police forces as a standard issue weapon. I mean, obviously it's America. Civilians can buy this, but most of the time when you see it, it's either police or military. This could be stolen from a police car. Yeah, it could be. Does it look like it's mounted with all the accoutrements that a uh, police shotgun would be mounted? I mean, it doesn't have like a holographic sight or anything, but I mean, it definitely, yeah, I mean, it, it matches the grade of it could be a police level firearm. It's just the same style with like all the, I don't know, the different attachment points. And everything. I'm not, I'm not a, 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 I'm not a gun expert off yeah, the top of my head, <laughs> um, but essentially, yes, it's not, it's not like super fancy attachments, but this is not out of place to see like a police officer in a riot using or you know just like uh also a similar model could be seen used in the military well i just uh, i i don't like that these numbers are repeating over and over again in I random assume, places now so. that you're having this point you're talking about the numbers repeating that you're telling these other two about you know like oh yeah the what the yeah. sequence actually is um no i don't know repeating? about tell them but uh this these this sequence of numbers that I'm using that I've seen off the shotgun, 
that I used to open this phone, I got out there. This is what mm-hmm. was spray painted. Um, no, I'm not going to write them down for them. I'm not going to give them the full range. Um, hey, fair enough. Do, do you, Grant, do you see any other numbers in this house? I hate to the clock. Kind of worried to look around, but <laughs> um, the clock yeah. stuck on two two nine. Yeah, I the clock is indeed stuck on two twenty nine. This is why we were called. I mean, I'm I'm beginning to think that yeah, the, this these numbers must drive you crazy. What's the Something date now. again? The day. Today is October 12th of 2015. 10-12. Okay, so. But here, yeah. there's another thing that's immediately keeping in mind you. The address of this place is 22 Maurice River Parkway. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I wouldn't play these lot as lottery numbers anytime soon. Um, <laughs> I do well, want I, I do want to try to get somebody to go out. The other agent, who was it? Gant that's here. Um get him to go look at the numbers to make sure it doesn't connect the disappearance of those numbers later on today with my if I'm the only one that's been in the tent. I don't want to get Speaking of Gant, uh this is the exact moment that Gant comes back in and it's just like, oh man, it's just a it, the madhouse does not stop. Those vultures just will not shut up. Christ. Um Am I interrupting anything? No. No, I think it's probably time to get rid of the bodies. Let them go. Okay. Um, yeah. Maybe cover up Gantz if you could. Make sure that those numbers get covered up. Um, we want to we want to make sure that it's preserved by tomorrow. By well, you're gonna pull the bodies out, so make uh, sure that they don't make, get make sure we don't on. get any any blood dripping off the stump exactly. and I got you them, I got you get them covered up so the um your your expert that's coming in tomorrow can actually see the numbers um I don't know it, it, if it feels like it's going to rain or anything out here if it's wet you know just it's best to preserve that as as best you can yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's a really good point. All right, um, I'll work with forensics here too. And you know, he immediately is just calling out, "Hey, let's get this, let's get this going here." And you know, officers come in to start cleaning up the bodies in the kitchen and the like. And uh, the 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 cleanup process has begun. But for now, Gant is still here. But at the same time, he's also distracted. So if you just want to walk to another room and continue your discussion, you totally could. <laughs> He didn't randomly pick this place. He was drawn to this spot. Um, I, and I suspect if we look around even more, we'll we'll see this repeat of a number, these numbers coming up more and more. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of interested in, I'm thinking like, well, how did he become exposed to the number to begin with? That we might have to find back at his university. Maybe so. Um, did you, you said you found some names in his phone mm-hmm. um maybe we can kind of think about i don't know if we want to do a phone interview with him uh, i think it's gonna be a road trip um if we could cut off is gant gonna go up there we may not need the company to go do the interviews no we volunteer no. to go do the interviews yeah, but I'm 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 a little concerned about the new expert that's coming in. Uh that that worries me. I don't want to be morbid, gentlemen, but we might have to um erase her. The little voice in your head lets you know just because as seasoned agents that in a highly public case, an agent that has assigned it suddenly violently disappearing. You really want to make sure that you're slick on that, because if that goes wrong, that could cause a lot more attention and a lot more problems. Just, yeah. just a throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. I am. Oh, just real quick. Um, was there anything? I'm not sure how this happens, but the, if they're taking photographs of the crime scene, where are the roles of 
if it's all electronic or they kind of old schooling it and there's rolls of film, um, anything that might be in these, these bags or anything that we could get access to real quick to destroy. I don't know if there's anything like that within, you know, in here. One could make a logical assumption that there's a good chance that the local police department before the FBI come in, they took their own photos and that probably a good bit of that data. I mean, you know, you don't take photos and they immediately pop out. That's probably data in the police department. However, you did also see um, that Gant has a camera strapped around his neck and obviously the FBI are taking their own photos as well. Uh, other, otherwise, like when in those evidence you created somebody, you saw like, you know, there weren't, there aren't photo albums of this crime scene or anything, but everything's electronic. The photos are being taken digitally. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how we get that off of them, but that might be, uh, agent Lin Litton. Could be. May we've got contact with him. Um, maybe call him in. Oh, we also have. Yeah, because uh, if I show up late, then you call. Yeah, just tell him Gant has a a camera. I think needs to disappear. Yeah, we we also have a potential contact uh, in the state police, too. You also. A recap of what you know about the state police. The state police have been providing an advisory role in this case. Thomas Blanett is a state police trooper, but he is not yet assigned to the case. Watchdog could pull strings to assign him to the case if need be. But as of right now, he's not involved whatsoever. So yeah, I told agent Litton that maybe that that camera needs or at least the sim card needs to or the memory card needs to disappear of gants off of gants neck <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's uh, have i seen gant though yet yeah, because website. you you would notice that um, not only was there that official looking tall African American man that left, got in the car, and drove away, but in the aftermath of that there was a period of time where you know as the as the the crime scene went on, there was another similar looking. I mean, he's got like a a suit and like an like an FBI windbreaker on, so you can clearly tell. Okay, you no, know, he is, and he fits the description that Watchdog gave of like a younger FBI agent. Okay, uh, short, stocky. Eyes slightly too close together, but despite that, he seems like he's got his shit together. So I'm going to start working my way through the crowd to get to a point where he is. Um, if he's on the other now, side of the... with, I should also clarify, that was at a point where he was outside, and like then he went back in. Okay. And then when he went back in, that's when you got that text of, like, Gant has a camera. And then you think back and like, oh yeah, there was a camera around his neck. So, okay. like, he's in the house in the crime scene right now. But you do know okay. what he looks like. All right. So I'm going to have to wait until he comes out before I can do anything. Because if I if I just walk forward... I mean, yeah, there there's, like, a dozen police officers scattered around the right. parameter at various points. This is not a, a place you can just waltz into. So I will text back and say, not possible for me at the moment. Yeah. Whenever you get an opportunity. Okay, uh, but Gant right now, I mean, he's staying here within the crime scene with the other officers as they, you know, bring in forensics to clean up the bodies. Uh, our three agents in the crime scene, the ball is in your court. What do you want to do? I say look around a little bit more um, in here, in the house. Okay. Maybe there's something besides the uh the address maybe there was something that drew yeah way here 
So, um, yeah, by all means, just uh, going around the house, trying to get a grip of everything at large. So one thing you would notice, you have a good forensic score. A brain freeze does too. So one thing you'd note is like as they're cleaning up the bodies is that, yeah, th there's no funny business. All of the Ridgeways were indeed murdered by gunfire. Um, all of them died in a short time just before and around 2.30 p.m. All of them were killed with either a single burst of, of uh, buckshot or a slug round, except for Clark Ridgeway, who survived the first shot but not the second. And though Way missed several times, they uh, all of the uh, bullets were sprayed near the bodies, except for the shot directed at the kitchen stove, which, with your with um, according to ballistic forensics, was apparently the first shot taken. Um, Way would have had to reload several times because the shotgun can't hold a full. He he fired sixteen shots in total. A shotgun can't hold 16 shots in total. Um, but it's clear the family had no means to fight back, and they didn't put up much of a struggle. But outside of that, you're looking throughout the house. Um, the family owned two cars. Their license plates are 99B0BB and 2A233C. Um, the family's phone number is 856-229-982. And as you spend some time just going through <laughs> repeatedly, and maybe, maybe you look at their social security numbers, you know, you find out that their numbers consist of only zeros, one, twos, threes, eights, and nines. There is a startling lack of four, five, six, and seven. And... And you look at this, and Agent Grant, yeah, as someone that actually knows the sequence as well, you're just like, okay, no, we, we, we that, that you want to see more, right? You want to look for these coincidences. Oh, it's not a coincidence. There's something completely wrong here. Yeah. So <laughs> this, I know this is out there, but just because you're putting some time into this and you have an, a high int score, I think it's not improbable to say that if you. If you remove the um, letters with numbers and their license plates, add those to the totals of their bank accounts, their mortgage amounts, their and their social security numbers together, uh, that gets you a total of, let's see, what is that? I, I don't even know what alien that could be, but if you sum all of those things together, that gets you that number. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing oh, math. Nine, nine. Yeah, I gotta, <laughs> yeah, I gotta back up. I gotta stop. Uh, uh, yeah, make me a stand roll, Agent Grant. <laughs> You're seeing all these horrible coincidences everywhere. I got a three. So it's, oh, it's, three, you yeah. still lose one because this um, is fucked up. But I am backing up, and I gotta. I just tell it. I gotta go. I mean, I gotta. I gotta stop this. This is maddening. I'm down this rabbit hole. I'll look for these numbers forever. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just have a seat and and and. Sip your coffee. Stop looking at stuff. And um, yeah, it, the 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 stove that you mentioned. Um, is there anything unique about this stove? It's this old. The most unique thing about it is its ugly old garish green color. You know, it's this 1970s stove, and this is an analog clock, not a digital one. Yeah. Uh, the glass is slightly cracked from the buckshot on it. Um, outside of the synchronicity of 229 and how ugly it is, there's nothing else special about it. Other than, you know, I mean, both um, Brain Freeze and Grant have good forensic scores, so they can cross-reference to note that despite apparently no one standing near it, the first shot that Way fired was at this stove. Yeah, yeah. was he just going for the clock? looks like it yeah interesting so very strange this is that... a really terrible stove too <laughs> <laughs> if uh Litton was in with his appraise uh score he'd be rambling about how horrible and worthless that ugly stove is no no it's vintage it's uh it's an antique I'm... 
the avocado green. If well, if he yeah. shot the clock on the stove first, then he did that to stop the clock on that particular number. Yes. Well, go from your artistic point of view, do you think this could be sending some sort of uh, message? Artistic message? You mean like the shotgun patterns or the numbers that, that we're seeing? Anything. that This seems to me like this was this man's thesis. It was his final work. A collation, or what's the word? Coalescence of his whole life story. Yeah, obviously something. Well, we know some what the something is. The numbers drew him here. So, what is it about this family, this house, that is particularly unique to have all these numbers? Like, why? And are the Robinsons themselves involved? The Ridgeways. Yeah. The Ridgeways. Ridgeways. Are the Ridgeways themselves somehow involved? Right. Yeah, it, it just doesn't... The house and the family is what is kind of confused me. And maybe it is some kind of art. I mean, who knows what was going through his mind when he, when he came here, you know? I have no idea. This is highly pathological behavior. Yeah. Seems like this man, well, we all know that he must have been driven by some unnatural force, but. Mm. Or could he have is. just committed the crimes and then picked up the numbers from around the house and wrote them down? The coincidence isn't a coincidence. It's because he purposefully wrote down those numbers. I think it's I, too soon to say, um, but I think he came here with the numbers in mind. Um, yeah. And if you do see me, I'm writing um, nines in my notebook and then writing a series of twos. So <laughs> if Brain Free sees me, that's as I'm talking, it's just compulsory writing these numbers down. Two and nine. Two is B. Nine I, is I. B yeah. I. Oh, I'm already going insane. Uh, but there's no zero. There's no zero letter. Oh, I'll no, start right now. No, there is. No, oh, no. I mean, I mean, like in terms of letters, yeah. No, that's that's maybe. But there is a <laughs> oh, zero. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. I mean, it depends uh, on if uh, if the person was crazy enough to call Z zero instead of 26, but that's a debate in and of itself. Well, there's 20. 20 is a number, a letter, U. 22 is a letter, W. I think it's about but time. It doesn't, out here. it doesn't say anything. It doesn't yeah. spell anything. No, no. Th this can't be a spelling, but there's definitely some meaning behind it. Yeah, I guess this is why... We're not supposed to have math skills. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, look. Texas. I uh, think don't actually. Think about the elephant. I think actually they might be underestimating. We might have been at, you know, not to have math skills. But I think that we need to not have cipher skills. It, this is a code of some sort. <laughs> And if we accidentally just figure it out, like figuring out that they were letters instead of numbers, uh, obviously it's that's not the answer. But if it had been, then we'd be fucked. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm a, I appear to know what I'm. I'm just writing these numbers down. So, I'm sure you should write them down. I'm not even paying attention. I'm just yeah. doodling. <laughs> Um, just for the but sake of having you all out here. in the same room of, yeah, I was about to say that it, it makes sense that this discussion, maybe throwing in some text messages, uh, leaving the crime scene, Kenor isn't here and Gant is preoccupied with the police officers. Um, but yeah. as the three of 
you step out of the house towards leaving the parameter there. Hmm. With all the, all the media here, there's plenty of flashing of cameras, right? But once the three of you step out, there's a notable, like, there's a whole wave of, duh, 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 uh, of flashing. And a dark-skinned, classically handsome man uh, giving a report for his camera producer. He, he's still behind the tape uh, far enough, but the way that his angles get, he's definitely probably getting you guys in the shot. And um, as he... As he, as the camera begins uh, rolling, he begins speaking. Enrico Save here to give the Channel 6 evening news. In the wake of the massacre in Alliance, the FBI has yet to give a meaningful statement about the shooting, only implying the death of the entire Ridgeway family and holding back the name of the killer. Just recently, additional agents arrived on the scene, pictured behind me. Cameraman clearly goes towards you got the three of you zooming in. What is the FBI hiding and keeping from the public? Did this mystery shooter have an agenda the government seeks to hide? Who killed the Ridgeways? And with that, as you guys are being barraged by Enrico Save, we're going to call it for next week. <laughs> I tighten up my hood, so it's just the eyes. <laughs> Our players included Max Meltzer. Kaylin McDowell, Thomas Grooms, Julian Arba, and myself with Sham Sabin as the handler. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean, Spotify, or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account, or you can click the Super Thanks button just below the screen just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh together with all the members of our gaming club inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Delta Green role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming. Good gaming.